fun. Mm -hmm. It's a charming new comedy called Time After Time, which begins with the indisputable fact that the great British author H.G. Wells wrote a great deal about time travel into the future, and some of his predictions were remarkably accurate. Was he just a good guesser, or did he have an unfair advantage because he actually traveled into the future? <laughs> well, in Time After Time, Wells has developed a time machine which is hijacked by Jack the Ripper, who uses it to escape from Victorian London to modern-day San Francisco. And Wells follows him in hot pursuit, and in 1979, far in his own future, he winds up having dinner with a liberated young lady. Are you, um, you a scientist or something? Whatever makes you say that? Just a hunch. I don't know. You give me the impression of someone who's cloistered away somewhere most of the time, and a library or something doing research and never reads the newspaper. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, I used to write for a newspaper, the Pall Mall Gazette. Really? Mm -hmm. It shows how much I know, right? You were a reporter? I wrote articles on whatever struck my fancy. Social issues, mainly. The last thing I did was a series on free love. Free love? Jeez, I haven't heard that term since the eighth grade. Tell me something. Did you think it was very forward of me to invite you to lunch like this? Do you uh, often invite... Do I often invite strange men to lunch? No, I do not. But it's not often that a strange man turns me on. Or a strange woman. Oh, don't get me wrong, I didn't mean to imply I was a dyke. A dyke? Oh, sorry, lesbian or anything like that, because I'm not. I like my sex straight. It's just that I do go for months sometimes without meeting anybody who does it for me, you know what I mean? A lot of people like, um, like my friend Carol, you know, I'm not telling tales out of school, but a lot of people can just sleep around, you know, but not me. I really have to like the guy, otherwise it's just no go. I'm sorry. I guess I shouldn't say all that stuff right off the bat like that. It's not women's lib. I just get nervous. When I get nervous, I tend to babble. Do I make you nervous? Yes. You do, sort of. Why? Because I like you. Malcolm McDowell and Mary Steenburgen, and you might remember her from the Jack Nicholson picture, Going South. They both have a really nice quality there. The whole movie, in fact, has a delicate way of quietly kidding serious material. But there are more dramatic moments, too, like in this scene, where Wells demonstrates his time machine to his doubting girlfriend. You sure you know what you're doing? What am I saying? This is completely bananas. I don't propose to take you any great distance. Suppose we just go forward to this Saturday. How would that be? Just fine. My cleaning's due back. And so that would make it November the 10th. Now, don't expect too much. The entire voyage will only last about a quarter of a second. Are you ready? Come on. Well, we're here. Good. Can we go now, please? You still maintain this is all poppycock? That wasn't exactly the word I had in mind. Sometimes it's not so hot getting your picture on the front page. <laughs> time after time could have been one of those clumsy satires that make a lot of simple points time after time, but it's not. 
It's light-footed and quick-thinking, and it treats its material just seriously enough to make us care, and then it kids its characters just enough to seem playful. And in the midst of all the science fiction apparatus and Jack the Ripper's attack on the women of San Francisco, the awkward love affair between Malcolm McDowell and Mary Steenburgen is just plain sweet and charming. I agree with you up and down the line. This film was by Nicholas Meyer, who did the equally witty 7% solution. Mm -hmm. This picture is sort of an old-fashioned Hollywood fanciful entertainment. Uh, it reminds me in a way of uh, Warren Beatty's remake, Heaven Can Wait. Right. That yeah, took us yeah. to heaven. This picture takes us into the future, which is really the present. Mm -hmm. It's nice, and it has uh, nice special effects, time travel, twinkling little lights old-time, classy Hollywood film. And you know, there's something else in the midst of a fantasy or a science fiction film, which I guess we can call it, and that is the relationship between Mary Steenburgen and Malcolm McDowell. We use a, a lot of times we talk about the chemistry that goes on in a film. A lot of the times we don't know what we mean, but this time, I think there really is a chemistry, a kind of an awkwardness, a sweetness, an affection there that comes through and really sells that relationship. Yeah, you want them to get together, but know yeah. that since they come from two different times, that they really can't in some way. Well, it's a don't strong, give away the ending. Well, no. it's a strong picture. We can also recommend Time After Time, the charming new comedy in which H.G. Wells finds himself adrift in modern-day San Francisco. Two more yeses for that one.